Hi, this is Professor Cummings. I wanted to start a, a, another series here, one on kinematics and dynamics. But in this one, I want to talk about a concept that seems to come up in a lot of different engineering examples. And that's angular and tangential velocity. Now, angular and tangential velocity shows up a lot in manufacturing. It also shows up in machine. And it has a lot to do with how we design things or what we could expect when we uh, make certain design changes or when we are devices. So let's start looking at this, these two diagrams. On the right, you have what is just a three-jaw chuck. This is a spindle, or a three-jaw chuck and a spindle and a lathe. Uh, you have chucks that can actually grab a, a piece of raw stock, and as it rotates it, it rotates the stock, you're able to remove metal from, from the uh, workpiece. On the left, we just have a generic circle. It doesn't actually represent anything, but something that we can actually show rotating. And whenever you have something in rotation, you have two velocities that you want to be concerned with. The first that we're going to look at is angular velocity. And that is typically represented by the Greek symbol omega. Now, it's just how fast an object rotates. And that's measured in rotations per minute or revolutions per minute. And you'll see this a lot. Again, I use this spindle here to show the, the example that a lot of times your spindle speed is represented on the controller or the headstock of your lathe in RPMs. The second type of velocity is tangential velocity. It's also called your instantaneous velocity. It's called instantaneous velocity because it is the velocity tangent to the outside diameter of your workpiece. So right here at this instant, that is the velocity that you're, you're going to have and that's usually measured in meters per minute sometimes in feet per minute inches per minute but it's just the instant that this is traveling across a tangent point and as this these both are, are tied together by this equation here and this represents your v is your your tangential velocity or your instantaneous velocity and this omega is your angular velocity now your angular velocity and your tangential velocity or instantaneous velocity are proportional based on your radius. So the radius times your your rotational velocity gives you your instantaneous velocity. So that's the, the relationship between the two. So as you have something rotating, like you saw with that disk, you can actually find out what the angular velocity is. and from there have the instantaneous velocity. One of the reasons we like this, this angular velocity versus instantaneous in machining is because when you're machining something inside of this chuck, you've got a workpiece that's actually got a constantly change in diameter. So it's easier to give some idea what speed to take based on RPMs. Now let's look at this same wheel. And let's go ahead and attach something else to it right there on the front so that you've got two wheels that are got the share and axis. Now this has a very specific configuration. You see this a lot of times with gearing. You know, you'll put two gears in tandem, two pulleys in tandem, or any two you know, types of mechanisms that are sitting in, in tandem. Now given these two items, the same axis, you know, spinning around the same, rotating about the same center, you know, something, you know, actually happens. You've got a, if, if you took a point on the larger diameter and a point on the smaller diameter that you're just going to measure. It's hard to do red on red. On the smaller diameter, you'll see as this wheel makes one rotation, one revolution, the smaller wheel makes the same revolution. So what that tells you, if you have two items, two, two wheels that are locked onto one axis, that the angular velocity is going to be the same. So both of these wheels are rotating with the same angular velocity. So again, you see that in spite of the fact that they've got two different radiuses, they've got the same angular velocity. Your tangential velocity, however, is going to be proportional to, the, to whatever the radius is. So even though you've got the same angular velocity, you know, ang the angular velocity of one is equal to the other, the tangential velocity between the two are going to change. 
and it's going to be proportional to how big that diameter is or how big that radius is. Now this whole idea, you know, particularly with all those, you know, gearing that I'm showing up here, all the, the particular gearing that I had laid out, the reason I show that is because this is the whole idea behind the sprockets on a say a ten speed bicycle. You have a a series of wheels or a series of sprockets or gears that are holding on to one axis, being tied to one axis, and as that chain goes from one set of uh, gears to the other, you know, you might have the same angular velocity, but the tangential velocity, the instantaneous velocity that you're going to gain from, say, the main wheel on the 10-speed bike, which these are also on the same axis, is going to change dramatically from one sprocket to the next. And that, you know, again, that's going to be proportional based on the radius. So that radius is a constant of proportionality. Angular velocity will stay the same. You know, they'll all have the same angular velocity. So now let's look at another configuration. You've got that same setup, but now instead of locking them together on the same axis, let's separate the axis. So uh, since we separated the axis, now let's tie them together through a, a belt or a chain. So this looks a lot more like the chain on a bicycle now. Now when you have this configuration where you've got one belt that's tying them together and you've got a source that's being used as the driver, let's say this red is the driving and this blue is the driven, now you have a constant tangential speed or instantaneous speed and it's all because they're being tied together by this one unit, this one belt. So as one turns, the same instantaneous velocity happens with the other. Now, if we you know, set this up to look even more like a, a 10-speed bicycle, you know, we'd have a whole bunch of sprockets you know, lined up in here you know, between the two. But you know, since we're just looking at one-on-one, -on -one, we want to make sure we understand or want to emphasize that the tangential velocities are going to stay the same. So velocity at one is going to equal to the velocity at the other. So one and two are going to have the same instantaneous velocities. In this particular instance, you can see that the angular velocities are now a function of the radius. So there's still a proportional relationship but now to calculate that you base you know you have to actually divide by the radius of the tangential velocity and find the the varying angular velocities because those are no longer going to be the same so you maintain a constant uh tang instantaneous velocity and this is a lot of times the idea behind a lot of serpentine belts you know a lot of times the idea behind you know belts and pulleys you may see in in any mechanical system you actually keep a same constant instantaneous velocity from you know one motor to you know a driven pulley to a driving pulley but you can make a dramatic change in the angular velocity going from pulley to pulley just because you change the diameter of one pulley versus the other so that brings up the idea of a velocity ratio you know this velocity ratio is something you see a lot with mechanical design you see it you know, being applied to gears being applied to pulleys, being applied to, to sprockets and chains. What it is, is the rot ratio of the rotational speed of the input to that of the output, whether it be a gear, whether it be two pulleys, whether it be you know, two chains and sprockets. So the velocity ratio, you know, depicted as VR, velocity ratio, sometimes called the speed ratio, is the angular velocity of the input divided by the angular velocity of the output unit. And a lot of this is used in doing things like determining the size of pulleys in a system, you know, going through gear design, you know, setting up the number of teeth from one gear to the next, you know, even being able to size your motors properly in your system. You know, all these things are just uh, based on the whole idea that you've got a certain ratio between that, uh, the input and the output that is, can be translated through sort of as a factor, you know, and when determining the size of the driven versus the driver. 
So again, you'll see this a lot when you want to step up the power transmission or even changes in torque. You know, can you go back to the 10-speed bike example? You know, when you change that sprocket or go from chain from one sprocket to the next, you are indeed going to change the speed, but you also are going to apply different levels of torque. That's why it is, you know, say in a car example, you know, you can go from one gear to the next in certain situations. If you need more torque, you change to, you know, a different size gear. You're essentially changing your gearing ratio. It gives you more torque or less torque or higher speed or lower speed. So you can change the application, change the output. You know, and this is all based on uh, velocity ratio. Well, this is Professor Cummings. You probably do some uh, few. See, look. Blah. Hope you can subscribe. We can look at some future videos. Uh, you know, still going into dynamics. Uh, thanks for watching.